Hello and welcome back to our platformer tutorial series for the default game engine. In the previous videos we added particle effects and sounds to our pretty nice working platformer game, but we are still unable to move out of the initial screen. I mean, we can, but we won't see our hero anymore. So today we're going to add a camera to our character and make it follow the character's movements across our game world. First, let's start by adding a camera. Thanks to the camera, we will be able to specify precisely what we will be showing on screen. This is a straightforward step. To our hero game object, add the component of type camera. To better see what our camera can actually see, we can rotate the view in the editor by holding Ctrl or Command and left mouse button, and pan it with middle mouse button. Even if we are making a 2D game, default is a 3D game engine and everything here is placed in a 3D world, and sometimes it's better to view 3D in perspective mode, so you can enable it in the toolbar here. The visual representation of the camera in default is actually really tiny compared to its default Frustum. Frustum is this 3D figure and everything that is inside it will be visible to our new camera. But because our camera is placed as a child to our hero game's object, it is placed in its origin coordinates, therefore barely visible here, but this Frustum does not contain our hero sprite. So even if we would show the view from the camera, we would see a black screen, because there is nothing in the Frustum. We can for example enable our camera and check it. In order to display the view from the camera instead of our default initial view, we need to add a couple of lines of code to our hero script to tell our special render script that is responsible for rendering by using a msg.post function to use camera projection. The render script is a special socket and its address is starting with at sign, then containing the name of the socket which is render and ending with colon sign. The default built-in render script that we are using right now can handle this message and sets its internal state to show view from camera in that case. We don't need to go into details of it right now. Next message we will post to our camera component, so hash camera. Similarly as it was the case when we wanted to start acquiring focus for the input, we now need to acquire camera focus. This way our camera will be activated, but as nothing is in the frustum, we now see a black screen and we proved our point. Now let's solve this issue by offsetting the camera to show the content of our game. Unfortunately, the camera component doesn't have transform properties, so we can't really move it around nor rotate it. But we can do so with the game object that is having this component. So add another game object as a child to our hero game object, name it for example operator, like it's the one responsible literally for holding the camera, and move the camera component below the operator game object to make it the camera's parent. This way we can move the operator game object with the camera a little bit backward to make our hero's representation be contained in the frustum. Now remember that by moving our camera component below the other game object, we should also change its address in our script, so add the game object's name here, operator. Now we can check if everything is working. The game view might be stretched simply because our camera's view cut is square here, while the game's window has different width and height, so we can check the camera's property auto aspect ratio to be enabled. Here you can also check out other properties to fit our game's visual requirements. Note that by default, in default the Z axis is toward your screen. Near Z and Far Z properties of the camera component control the depth range that the camera can render, so it's important to set them correctly to ensure our game world is displayed as intended and we don't see a black screen, commonly seen when playing with cameras and rendering. We are also using a perspective camera, which behaves in a way that far objects are smaller while closer objects are bigger, so we could move the operator closer or further to zoom in and out. Nice trick here is that you can move background sprites a little bit further from the camera and easily achieve the perspective parallax effect. Note that zooming is still applied, so we might need to scale it up. But most 2D platformer games are rather suited for orthographic cameras. You can enable the camera's property orthographic projection. You can notice that the camera's first time changed to represent orthographic projection, and now it doesn't matter if objects are close or far from the camera, and frustum width and height is also neglected, because zoom is taken from the property orthographic zoom. You only need to take care of far and near planes to have everything visible for the orthographic camera. 
In our case, we moved our backgrounds to minus 100 units on the z-axis, tile maps are with z-value equal to 0, and hero sprite is above all of this, so with z-value 0.5. And everything is between cameras near and far planes. If you will ever need adjustments here, you can do so, for example if I put the far z of the camera to make background out of the frustum, it will be not visible in our game. If you saw it, let's revert this change quickly to get it back to our frustum. We needed to make sure that the camera follows our character, but it already does. Because our operator is a child of the hero character, its position is always relative to the hero's position and will be always updated to the current hero's position, so simply it follows it together with the camera. When we play with it a little, we could notice some problems. Those problems are the reasons why this video was published later on than planned but I needed to solve them and the default community helped me here. But also I needed to start this tutorial from scratch. Thanks to this, you can check out the thread I will also link down in the description to suit your game that project settings for your game. I was using in this tutorial the fixed update function and using fixed time step. So for me, making sure the update frequency setting in the display section is set to 60 helped solve any jittering on my screen. But as Sergey advises here, it's better to use a regular update function with vsync on and make everything be calculated in one frame. Those little intricacies are really important when making a game. But for this tutorial I want to touch only the basics. Nevertheless, I hope you feel now more comfortable with using cameras in default and this knowledge could be utilized not only to make platformer games, but actually any kind of game, including 3D ones. Let's wrap it up for now and in the next part we'll design the GUI, graphical user interface, to our game. Happy defaulting and see you soon!